Hello and welcome to this video on sterilizing your brewing equipment. Sterilizing to date has been a given. However, it is now time to provide a proper explanation of the options and methods. This is the second step in setting up your equipment. In the hierarchy of steps, it is immediately after cleaning and sanitizing. These remove contamination in the form of dirt and reduce the population of viable contaminants. Normally, this is done with a detergent. Sterilizing is necessary for brewing. Most everything exposed to air is exposed to foreign elements. This covers bacteria, viruses, waste, and wild yeast. It is a practical example of the Louis Pasteur experiment on abiogenesis, the spontaneous generation of life from nothing. This experiment proved the need for a foreign element before bacteria or other contaminants can grow. This applies to brewing in particular. By sterilizing equipment before use, it creates a clean state that ensures the only active microbe is the desirable yeast. There are several standard options, peroxide and similar agents, chlorine or other derivative agents such as bleach, this normally being a 10% bleach solution, ethanol, and this is anything above 75%, this will sterilize, and ideally 95% ethanol should be used. This can also be denatured or standardized alcohol. And finally, iodine or iodine derivative products. Collectively, these work by destroying bacteria, fungi, and viruses, either lysing the cell by osmotic action or chemical interaction with the cell membrane. Some use a pH shift to compromise cell membrane stability. The methods for these are as follows. First, the equipment is cleaned and washed using a detergent. The standard household detergent you use will be sufficient for this step. Ensure the vessels are cleaned and rinsed thoroughly. Next is the peroxide method. Using a 3% hydrogen peroxide solution, apply this to the equipment and allow it to sit for 15 minutes. Then either apply vinegar and wipe off, or only wipe the surface clean with the peroxide on it. The addition of vinegar is proposed by Susan Summer of the Virginia Polytechnic Institute and is claimed to have a greater efficacy in removing bacteria. Next are the methods derived from chlorine-based compounds. Take one part bleach and mix it with nine parts water. Generally 10 milliliters to 90 milliliters is enough for fermenting vessels, and one liter to nine for washing equipment like bottles and utensils. This can be diluted up to one part in 20 or 5%. The process is simplicity itself. Spray the bleach solution directly onto the fermenter inside and out. Leave this on the equipment to air dry. After this dries, Wipe the surface with a sterile, damp cloth. This removes the excess bleach and is needed for brewing. Next is the ethanol method. Ethanol is perhaps the simplest method of sterilizing. Take a 75% ethanol solution and spray this over the equipment and tools. Then leave it to stand. It will evaporate off. If time is concerned, it can be burnt off, assuming appropriate equipment. Ethanol is commonly used as a lab sterilizing agent for the following reasons cost, ease of use, and utility. Finally, the iodine method. Iodine is the final method for sterilizing. As a rule, this goes by the brand name Idolfa. Mix 15 milliliters in 19 liters of water and soak equipment in this for 10 minutes. Rinse the equipment afterwards with sterile water. This will produce a hospital grade sterilization. The appropriate equipment can also be sterilized using heat, pressure, and other processes. Most of these are limited to labs, lab equipment, and methods, such as autoclaves. Links to the CDC guidelines and information on sterilizing are provided in the description box below. Thank you for watching. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions you may have below.